What did I think of Comic Store Heroes and Nat Geo? Let's converse upon it. Over here with Pacheco's Twiddle Chair of Rage. Hello and welcome to Mario Pacheco's Swiddle Chair of Rage. I'm Mario Pacheco, and this is my Swiddle Chair. July 13th, the National Geographic Channel premiered a one-hour documentary called Comic Store Heroes. Following the employee, employees and some of the customers of New York's Midtown Comic, America's biggest comic book store, as they prepare for the New York Comic Con, the biggest comic convention on the East Coast. Full disclosure, I am a frequent customer of Midtown Comics. I go there for all my comic book needs. I have been to all their stores, the one in Times Square, Grand Central, and especially the downtown store on Fulton Street. They have a comic book club that meets there the last Friday every month, and I'm always there for the most part. So it's no surprise that I love this show. It's amazing to see a place that you've been to and love so much on the TV. Now I know that some of you are thinking, isn't there another show about a comic store with Silent Bob in it? Well, yes, AMC has a show called Comic Book Men about Kevin Smith's comic store in Red Bank, New Jersey. But that show sucks. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Kevin Smith. He made the film Dogma. Comic Store Heroes provides a more real picture of what goes on in a comic store. Everything Comic Book Men gets wrong, Comic Store Heroes gets right. Comic Store Heroes follows a number of people in Midtown Comics. There's Store Parker, the marketeer, who does the marketing at Midtown. The show follows his quest to get comic book legend Frank Miller to do a signing at the Midtown Comics booth at the 2011 New York Comic Con. Now, I was at the 2011 New York Comic Con, and I know how that ended, but the way the show presents it, you still feel the drama of it. You also see a little Zoe Gullickson, who is Thor's right-hand woman. She's called the secret weapon, because <laughs> she's really cool, she knows her stuff, she's totally approachable, and probably doesn't hurt that one could say she's kind of cute. I'm actually pretty friendly with Thor and Zoe, since they both host the Midtown Comics Book Club. There's also Alex Ray, the negotiator. Never met him. May have emailed him once. There's also Jerry Gladstone, the boss. I did meet him once when he reminded me that just because I'm dressed as Siler, I don't have license to kill people in the store. <laughs> I kid. Of course, I've never actually met him. <laughs> On the show, Jerry gives Alex a daunting task of finding incredibly rare Harvey Comics Hot Stuff The Little Devil Number 1, which was the first comic book Jerry ever read. We also get to see some of the super collectors, those who amass thousands upon thousands of comics over decades that are potentially worth millions of dollars. One such super collector featured is AJ Confessori, also known as CC Banana. <laughs> Alas, I never got the chance to meet CC Banana, but I did spy him at the New York Comic Con by Midtown's booth as a Banana Wolverine. God rest his soul. We'll see a little Jill Pantosi, the blogger, known as the Nerdy Bird. As boobs, reads comics. She tells us about what comics and blogging about them means to her as she lives her life with spinal muscular atrophy. There's a link below to Jill's blog if you're interested in checking that out. My favorite part of the show is the story of Chris R. Notarelli, the comic creator. Chris is an aspiring comic book creator and starving artist who's on a quest to get his comic book, The Protector, on the shelves of Midtown Comics, even going so far as making a short film to pitch the comic to Thor. Never actually met him either, but I could have sworn I've seen him around there. The Protector will actually go on sale at Midtown Comics come August 1st. Kind of spoils how that ends, but oh well. Go and buy it if you can. You know, I myself have been trying to write a comic book for years, and seeing Chris's story gives me hope that if he can do it, maybe I can too.
But my absolute favorite part of the show was the segment covering Midtown Comics downtown, not at Comic Con party last July, which I attended. As a result, I show up several times on the show. <laughs> I was on TV. <laughs> Yeah, it was cable, but still, I was on TV. And here are the screenshots to prove it. Note the Nat Geo logo in the corner. This cannot be faked. There I am, standing behind Thor. I noticed he was being filmed. I intentionally inserted myself into the shot. And that got me on TV. There I am again behind Thor. There I am again. There I am again. <laughs> This is after I lost the quiz they held after getting the first question wrong. Though I didn't know most of the rest of the answers. That's why I look so smug. There's me dressed as Siler from Heroes and the other participants of the costume contest they held. This is actually in the show's trailer. There's a link below where you can see that. There I am again. There I am again. This is after they were announcing the winner of the costume contest, which was not me. This assured me, though, that I was very close. Now, this is not me, this is a girl dressed as Batgirl, who I met while I was there, but I don't recall her name. It'd be cool if we met again, because she was on the show more prominently than I was. Enough about me. To conclude, Comic Store Heroes was awesome. This show has to be made, so that I can be on TV more. No. This show is a genuine look at the inner workings of a comic store, and I have it on good authority that that's just the tip of the iceberg. This is what we all can do. Email a comment to Nat Geo and tell them that Comic Store Heroes should be made into a series. We hope we will all soon get a closer look at the world's best comic book store. For more information, there's a link in the description to Midtown Comics website where you can find out more about their monthly book club and other stuff. Here below is a link to their YouTube channel. Yes, they have a YouTube channel as well, which you should all make sure you subscribe to. This concludes Mara Pacheco's Swivel Chair of Rage. If you liked what you have seen, please like, favorite, subscribe, and comment. All those nice things. Thank you for watching. God bless you all, and God bless America.